theory of mine. But I do want to bring in uh, this next fellow. You should know him for 12 years, the governor of the fine state of New York. That's a big feat in, in a very democratic state. This Republican now among those competing for the top prize to become the next Republican presidential nominee. George Pataki, good to see you. Good being back, Neil. How's the money for the campaign? We're just hearing that Rick Perry had to stop paying his staff. He says it's a momentary blip, but he is tweeting out. Hey, I'm, cash. Uh, I'm a fiscal conservative. You know, we're not going to spend more than we have, but we have enough to keep going for a long time. And that's what I intend to do. You know, you're not going to see massive advertising uh, about me, but you are going to see me out there making the case to the people. OK, now his case was made with people. and He had a lot of oil and gas money. We don't know exactly how much, but I think it's fair to say in the millions. So something went wrong or something was spent a little too soon. How do you and your staff sort of gird for that, 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 you know, just so that you don't blow it all on one thing. You know, it's the way I ran the government. You know, you don't spend what you don't have. So you're just very prudent. Uh, you don't build up this massive staff that makes you feel good because when you land someplace, you have 12 people coming up. I would insist that my I'm people, happy if that my people one. have people. I um, would want yeah, that. Yeah. And, and, and so long as you could pay for it, that's right. fine. But right. the, see, the government has that and they borrow to do that. And that's one of the problems, face, one of the many problems. Well, that worked for country. Jimmy Carter in the early days days and much is the same Herculean task for you, that you're not in that top tier, that's the rap against you. But again, these tiers change and all of a sudden Carly Fiorina has emerged as a premier player. How do you crowd in? You know, you just keep making the case. I'm going to be in the CNN debate and I'm happy about that. We're going to keep going and I think basically First, there's anger towards Washington, and I feel that. And it's anger not just at Democrats, but Republicans feel anger towards other Republicans as well, that Washington is a rigged game, and I happen to believe that. But ultimately, I think the American people want someone who's going to bring us together and actually solve things instead of pointing uh, uh, fingers and trying to divide us. And that's what I have done in New York. And if you can govern as a conservative Republican successfully in New York, solve problems, bring people together, change the, completely the nature of government, you can do it in Washington, and I know I can. But as a former governor and one who's been out of office for a while now, is that a tough sell to younger people? Like old geezers like me, you know very well your story and where yeah. you were on 9-11, what yeah. you're doing. Young people don't, so you nah, have to reintroduce yourself. Right? Yeah, I have to reintroduce myself, but I just had a meeting with a bunch of uh, college interns uh, where we sat and talked about politics. And it's not uh, the fact that I've been out of government for eight years, I think is a positive. Yeah. Uh, but what it is, is your vision for the future that they want to hear. And this is a century when America can be, can be making things here again, and we can be competing and producing jobs, and whether it's computer chips or next generation technology or energy innovation innovations that fuel the world with clean fuel. This is America's to do. And if we get government out of the way and empower those young people, have that vision, uh, let the entrepreneurs build the factories and create the jobs here, we're going to be able to do anything. And I know that. But do you get frustrated that Donald Trump gets all the oxygen? And even uh, yeah. today, the attention was on, you know, he isn't necessarily going to sign on to that pledge not to bolt from the party, depending on how the party treats him. What do you think of that? Do you think he's loyal? Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into whether he's loyal or not, but it does. You know, I'd rather that we focused on the issues. You know, how we're going to bring manufacturing back, how we're going to protect. He's the only one of all of you guys who says I can't guarantee that I would I would support the nominee. No, no. Yeah. Well, hey, that's for him to say. You know, I just want to make the case as to how I can lead this country. Are you and surprised this guy is toiling and, and out there doing the no. crowds and doing all this? And no. He just uh, can phone into these Sunday talk shows. You and, know, Neil. He has tapped into that anti-Washington, anti-politician sentiment. But nothing he says, Governor, has hurt him so far in the polls. Are yeah. you surprised? By because, that? because I think that's what it's about. It's about he's telling Washington, I don't like you. And the American people are thinking that same thing. Lobbyists have too much And how much do you power. step in to remind them, I'm your answer for that? Uh, well, I think also, at the same time they're angry at Washington, they see that America's too divided. And they don't want someone who's going to pit this group against that group or simply demonize. They want somebody who's going to offer solutions. And that's what I've done, and that's what I'll continue to do. And someone who can bring the American people together, and I, I know that I could do that as well. All right. Very good seeing you again, Governor. Thank you very, very much. Been traveling the world, right? Having a great time. All right, Governor, thank you. All right, in the meantime